Okay, so <clears throat> let's do a couple of examples to illustrate these concepts. In this activity, we are going to go over the concept of the difference equation, causality, and how to calculate the output for a system that has been defined by a difference equation. It's very, very basic. We are asked to determine the output of a system defined by the following difference equation. And we see there that we have the output as a weighted sum of a present and, well, of, of the input signal. And then we are giving an input signal for which we want to calculate the output. Now, our difference equation, y of n, is equal to one third x of n plus one third s of n plus one. Notice that we are looking at an output in the future. To implement this filter, the <clears throat> signal will have to already be stored in your computer, like in a, in a simulation of sound enhancement or speech enhancement, where the signal has already been recorded, or image processing, one-third x of m plus two. So we see that this is a moving average. Okay, we are averaging values, three values. It's a um, three-point moving average. We also can see, by the way, that it is non-causal. Why? Because we are looking at the, the output depends on the present, but last future inputs. Again, not implementable in real-time applications, but it's still implementable in applications where you have the data already stored. And this is the difference equation that gives us the relationship between the output and the input, and it completely characterizes the system. So with that, let's see, uh, we have x of n. We are given that this is 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 4, 6, 4, 2, 0, 0, 0. Our n indices, to know where these samples actually go, is minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And <clears throat> we need to calculate the output. Now, you will never do this manually. Except perhaps in this problem just to illustrate the process. You implement this, for instance, in Octave or MATLAB using the conv, for, because this is really a convolution operation, or the filter functions. But just to illustrate the process, let's actually compute it. So at this point, notice that for a particular sample, like x of n minus 4, or to calculate y minus 4, what do we have here? This will be one third x of minus four plus one third x of minus third, one third x of n minus two. So we are talking about these three values right here. And what we see is zero plus zero plus zero multiply times one third gives us zero. So our output is zero. Now we move the window again by one sample. Same thing, zero. We move it again. And now in this case we have zero, zero, but we have a two. So we are going to get two thirds or 0 0.6667 and now here we move it again and we get 0, 2, and 4. 4 plus 2, 6 divided by 3 is going to give us 2. Let's do another one here for y equals 0. For y equals 0, we have 1 third of x of 0, just to illustrate it, plus 1 third x of 1 plus one third x of two. Notice, for the value zero, we have the present input, but future inputs here, right? And this is equal to k. 
have is x of 0, which is 2, one third times 2, plus x of 1, 4, plus x of 2, 6. So we have 12 over 3, or 4. And this just continues. So next, for x of 1, we have 14 over 3, or 4.6. Going forward, we have another 12 over 3, 4, here, 6 over 3, 2, 2 thirds, 0, 0, 0. Again, remember, this is not how we are going to do it uh, practically. In my lab, you will use the function filter. Filled field for a non-causal implementation or the function convolution because we are implementing a convolution sum. Points to illustrate here. Number one, these LTI systems are defined by different equations. Here is an example of a different equation. Number two, these different different equations in discrete time, they are the equivalent to the differential equations for continuous time. They completely characterize the system. Three, by looking at the difference equation and looking whether the output y depends on present and past inputs or in present and future inputs, or if you use any future input, like in this case, future m plus one, m plus two, that will mean that the system is non-causal. So you can say, okay, LTI causal, output depends on present and past inputs, LTI non-causal, it uses some future input. Non-causal systems, are they implementable? The answer is still yes, but not in real-time applications, in applications where the data has been stored. Now, for a given input with a particular order, we are able to calculate the output. These are going to be moving windows where we apply those coefficients. In this case, a moving average, but we could have any other coefficients in the case of an FIR filter, this could be different. It is just a multiply-accumulate operation, which, as I previously mentioned in other videos, DSP processors, if you are implementing this in real time, uh, have been optimized to do that multiply. They have very fast multipliers, accumulate operation in a single clock cycle, and they are able to do, even as early as 2001, the Texas Instruments Series 64, C64, they could do 2.5 billion multiplier, oper uh, multiplier accumulate operations per second. 